Good morning, Car Clinic Affiliates. Your Car Clinic Minutes for the week of August 21st, 2017 are about to head your way. So go ahead and press that record button. As always, thank you for broadcasting and listening to Bobby Likas Car Clinic. Have a great weekend. Hi, I'm Bobby Likas with today's Car Clinic Minute. Gargoyles, dragons, and Bigfoot all send shivers up your spine. But Hemi is a monster that really strikes horror in the hearts of men. Now don't be afraid, because when I return, I'll leash the Hemi beast. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Has the summer heat taken a toll on your vehicle's battery? Count on O'Reilly Auto Parts for the Super Start battery that's right for your vehicle. For a limited time, purchase a Super Start Premium, Extreme, or Platinum battery and get up to a $15 O'Reilly gift card by mail. O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Limit supply. See store for details. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. The monster Hemi, whose mere sound makes mortals whimper, first paired in 1948 as a six-cylinder engine developed by Harry Westlake for Jaguar. In 1964, Hemi's rose to kings of the jungle at the Daytona 500, taking first, second, and third places. And today, these automotive Hellcats top 400 horsepower. But what does Hemi mean? Hemi is short for hemispherical, which represents the half-sphere architecture of the engine's combustion chamber. Unlike the typical wedge-shaped design, Hemi's rounded dome allows for increased airflow, which means colossal horsepower. Perfect. I'm Bobby Likas. Likas, you'll love us. Hi, I'm Bobby Likas with today's Car Clinic Minute. All for one may be about musketeers, but if musketeers or mouseketeers or engineers travel together on the ground, I'll tell you about their one for all when I come back. Oh, oh, oh. O'Reilly. Has the summer heat taken a toll on your vehicle's battery? Count on O'Reilly Auto Parts for the Super Start battery that's right for your vehicle. For a limited time, purchase a Super Start Premium, Extreme, or Platinum battery and get up to a $15 O'Reilly gift card by mail. O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Limit supply. See store for details. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Auto Parts. The Three Musketeers may have been all for one, but the Mighty Bus, a multi-country engineering feat, is the one for all. Short for omnibus, which means for all in Latin, the first bus appeared in Paris in 1662. This eight-seater was horse-drawn, and not until 1831 would steam-driven buses putter around the streets of London. Speaking of which, the first famous double-decker appeared in 1847 and offered half-fares to those who climbed onto the open-air second deck. Honors for the first gas-driven motor bus go to Germany in 1895. But today, the Omnibus is omnipresent, providing rides for all, all over the world. I'm Bobby Likas. Likas, you'll love us. Hi, I'm Bobby Likas with today's Car Clinic Minute. Automotive history is filled with famous men like Henry Ford. But have you ever heard of Alice Ramsey and Nettie Powell? Stay tuned, because when I come back, I'll introduce you to the original Thelma and Louise. Has the summer heat taken a toll on your vehicle's battery? Count on O'Reilly Auto Parts for the Super Start battery that's right for your vehicle. For a limited time, purchase a Super Start Premium, Extreme, or Platinum battery and get up to a $15 O'Reilly gift card by mail. O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Limit supply. See store for details. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Thelma and Louise may have perfected girlfriend cruising, but Alice Ramsey invented it. Joined by Nettie Powell and two other women in 1909, Alice, a 22-year-old mother and Vassar grad, hitched up her skirts and took to the road. Well, almost. 
Actually, there was no real road between New York and San Francisco. But that didn't deter these women on wheels from driving 4,000 miles in just under two months. Undaunted by danger and unencumbered by a map, they wound their way from coast to coast using private roads, open fields, and railroad straits during this literal groundbreaking journey. Now that's what I call a road trip. I'm Bobby Likas. Like us, you'll love us. Hi, I'm Bobby Likas with another Car Clinic Minute. Tony Bennett sang, Fly Me to the Moon. Back then, that was a far trip. But now, dozens of closer moons circling the globe make travel on Earth heavenly. I'll position it all for you when we come back. Oh, oh, oh. O'Reilly. Has the summer heat taken a toll on your vehicle's battery? Count on O'Reilly Auto Parts for the Super Start battery that's right for your vehicle. For a limited time, purchase a Super Start Premium, Extreme, or Platinum battery and get up to a $15 O'Reilly gift card by mail. O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Limit supply. See store for details. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Ancient mariners navigated by the one and then only moon. But travelers today negotiate seas and streets alike by a constellation of 27 Earth-orbiting satellites that enable Global Positioning Systems, or GPS. Weighing three to 4,000 pounds each, GPS's solar-powered satellites circle the Earth twice a day, and GPS receivers pinpoint your location by finding the distance to at least three of these satellites, then extrapolating the data by a process called trilateration. The next time you leave your heart to in San Francisco, you'll know just where to find it. I'm Bobby Likas. Like us, you'll love us. Hi, I'm Bobby Likas with today's Car Clinic Minute. Pains in the neck. Little brothers filing taxes and collisions. I can't help you wrestle Uncle Sam, but when I come back, I'll give you some easy ways to avoid whiplash. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Has the summer heat taken a toll on your vehicle's battery? Count on O'Reilly Auto Parts for the Super Start battery that's right for your vehicle. For a limited time, purchase a Super Start Premium, Extreme, or Platinum battery and get up to a $15 O'Reilly gift card by mail. O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Limit supply. See store for details. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Auto Parts. To avoid whiplash, remember CRASH, C-R-A-S-H. C, click seatbelts every time. R, restrain or remove loose objects, which become projectiles in a crash. A, airbags lessen blows. But remember, kids under 12 should ride in the back seat. S, safe drivers never tailgate. It serves no purpose, and it puts you at needless risk. H, headrest. Misnamed, headrests are really head restraints. But to protect against whiplash, they must be properly aligned. The top of the headrest should lie somewhere between the top of your head to the top of your ears. If only Tax Form 1040EZ were as simple. I'm Bobby Likas. Like us, you'll love us.
Bobby Lyka's car clinic begins at six minutes after the hour. Bobby Lyka's car clinic begins at six minutes after the hour. Bobby Lyka's car clinic begins at six minutes after the hour. Bobby Lyka's car clinic begins at six minutes after the hour. Bobby Lyka's car clinic begins at six minutes after the hour. Countdown to three minute mark, five, Four, three, two, one, mark. Bobby Lyka's car clinic begins at six minutes after the hour. Bobby Lyka's car clinic begins at six minutes after the hour. Bobby Lyka's car clinic begins at six minutes after the hour. Countdown to one minute mark. Five, four, three, two, one, mark. Countdown to 30 second mark, 
Five, four, three, two, one, mark. Count down to 10 second mark. Five, four, three, two, one, mark. Welcome to Bobby Likas Car Clinic, live via ABC Radio Satellite Services. If you have a car question for Bobby, call now at 1-800-264-5454, toll free from anywhere in America. And now, here's your host, Bobby Likas. And thank you, Marty White. Folks, good morning. Welcome to this edition of Bobby Likas Car Clinic. Here we are, uh, some 26 years deep. Well, deep and wide, as it were, and my, how the technology has changed. Automobiles, uh, the old saying, they don't make cars the way they once did. Well, you can believe that. Cars today are a lot better made. Technology, the advancement, I mean, even so much so that even if you don't own a car today, guess what? Courtesy of Maven, well, not courtesy, but through Maven, you can actually rent one. So if you have a gig and you need a car, well, there's Maven, ready, willing, and able to deliver an automobile to you. And all you have to do is to go to mavengig.com or maven.com and check it out. This segment of Bobby Likas Car Clinic is brought to you by Diablo Sport and the Intune i2 Performance Programmer. Folks, you can boost your vehicle's power without even popping the hood. Look for more at DiabloSport.com. Now, Miss Jan will take your calls at 888 Car Clinic. That's 888 227 2546. I'll make it easy for you. 227 2546. Miss Jan will put you in the queue and I will put you on the air. Again, Bobby Likas Car Clinic live every Saturday from 10 till noon right here on your favorite AM and or FM station and at WatchBobbyLive.com. Stay tuned. When I come back, it's you, me, the telephone, and cars. Like us, you'll love us. Folks, we're testing an Intune i2 performance programmer from Diablo Sport and we'll share feedback and results over the next few months. First is ease of installation. Directions were clear and the setup was easy. The Intune i2 is preloaded with dyno and street tested performance programs developed specifically for your car or truck, ensuring optimal power and drivability gains. From there, you can then customize a tune tailored to your own performance needs. What a great way to boost power without even popping the hood. Diablo Sport Intune i2 has a fantastic look and now features the latest generation ARM processor for a higher resolution screen and an exceptionally responsive touchpad. You can update your i2 software on virtually any computer. Windows, Mac, Linux, and update times are fast. Even the large updates take no more than five minutes. I'll report more to you about the Intune i2 in the coming weeks. In the meantime, check out the i2 for yourself at Diablosport.com. That's Diablosport.com. We recently had an 08 Ford Expedition coming to the shop, and the owner was complaining about an awful burning smell after driving the car any distance. After giving the vehicle once over, we found leaking valve cover gaskets, which were allowing oil to run down onto the exhaust manifold. The entire engine bay was also covered with a fine film of oil from a bad power steering hose. We needed to clean everything first so we could accurately diagnose and fix the problem quickly. We used Berryman B33 engine degreaser and sprayed it onto a cool engine. We let it sit for a short time, then rinsed it off, leaving everything clean and oil free. Once we replaced the hose and the valve cover gaskets, the Ford was ready to get back on the road. Behrman B33 engine degreaser was perfect for this job. The fast spray-on rinse-off cycle saves time and conserves water. The product's also safe to use. Its biodegradable formula contains no harmful phosphates, solvents, abrasives, or VOCs. Learn more about Behrman B33 degreaser and other great Behrman products at BehrmanProducts.com. That's BehrmanProducts.com. You're listening to Bobby Lycus Car Clinic. Pricey Outfitters, I'm Tina. How can I help you? I'd like to place an order. Great. Which item? The cotton roll neck sweater, large. Okay. Periwinkle loaded or caramel? The caramel, please. The what? I'd like it in caramel. Oh, the caramel? Yeah, that's what I said, Tina. Actually, you said caramel when it's pronounced caramel. Can't we just call it yellow? No. No. 
Everyone knows the best part of a Milky Way. They just don't know how to say it. After all, it's our caramel. It's caramel. Ugh, that makes a Milky Way great. You start my morning, you stir in my soul. You warm my heart, make me feel whole. Your aroma calls me, it starts my morning. Happy morning, your name is Folgers Mountain. Well, now you're here. Your aroma helps me wake, and the day is mine to take. The best part of waking up is Folgers in your cup. And now, back to Bobby Likas Car Clinic and your host, Bobby Likas. And I want to welcome you to today's edition of Bobby Likas Car Clinic, uh, a great program that we have lined up for you. And how do I know that? Because uh, I'm here to make the wheels turn, and that's my job. And I love my job. And In fact, Saturday, after working in the shop for uh, 50 or 60 hours, Monday through Friday, uh, and yes, I'm in the shop Monday through Friday uh, and, and having to, uh, you know, the, meet the challenges of repairing automobiles and trying to uh, diagnose, to test, to figure out what makes vehicles run so poorly when they run poorly. And I can tell you uh, today's cars really run well until they don't. And when they don't, they can really be a challenge to repair. We had one this week that we worked on the whole week. The car came in Monday with a check engine light, and it left yesterday. And I, I can, in, in all honesty, that, that car is really not fixed yet. There are some real challenges, and it only has 50,000 miles. It was a Traverse. It was a GM Traverse. And, and I got to tell you, uh, it has to do with gasoline direct injection. At least that's part of the problem. And there's some other problems that we had with it. And I'll share that with you. But first, we're going to take a call from Ed. And then Jan will take your call at 888-CAR-CLINIC. I'll make it easier for you. It's 888-227-2546. That's 227-2546. I'll wave everyone at the camera for Watch Bobby Live. I hope you folks are doing well. Thank you for tuning in at Watch Bobby Live. And just remember, every Saturday from 10 till noon, uh, and as long as I can draw a breath, I imagine... I've asked, asked, I have had people ask me, how long are you going to do this radio program? Well, it's not a radio program. It's a radio. It's a broadcast. It's a video cast. It's social media, all the above. Uh, it, it's my way of sharing with you what I learn and what my crew learns during the week. And I got to tell you, it, 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 we bring a valuable service. And I sometimes uh, just, you know, I don't really know how valuable that is. But if you've got a problem with the automobile, who do you ask? And what's more important, how do you know what questions to ask? Therein lies the real challenge. Let's go to Ed first, and then we see that Jim from Detroit is with us, our car clinic reporter. Uh, we'll see what he brings to the table. And then I'm going to share with you information about the Diablo Sport i tune i2 product that we uh that we installed recently and about the benefits but first ed welcome to bobby like car clinic thank you bobby hey first of all i'd like to say you know i appreciate all the service that you give us because i've used i've been listening to you for years and i've used those tips quite a few times okay, thank you thank you <laughs> I appreciate that. backyard mechanics like us <laughs> but bobby what i have is i've got a uh, uh my daughter has a 99 toyota camry and the check engine light came on went down and they said the code was catalytic converter um and i was just wondering is there anything that you can do besides replacing that to maybe clean it out and use a high test or is there a solution that you can run through it or take it off and actually clean it or or, or what uh well first let me explain uh, uh and I, I won't tell you how to make the watch but you need to know this mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What the the uh, dirty air or whatever is not burned in carbon carbohydrate carbohydrates. Listen to me, uh, in in carbon hydrocarbons, <laughs> carbohydrates. Yeah, right. I'm thinking about food. Uh, well, I haven't had breakfast. Uh, <laughs> obviously, uh, whatever is not burned that comes out of the engine, the front mm -hmm. the the pre cat O2 sensor measures it, and then mm -hmm. that tells the computer if the engine's running too lean, which is not enough fuel and too much air, or too rich, which is the opposite. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, and, and there's, it's always chasing uh, a mixture because you're always on and off the gasoline and the load of the engine's always changing. So right. there are subtle changes or tunes 
that uh, were not so subtle. The timing, the fuel delivery, and even the valve uh, actuation is now immediately changed on the fly as you drive the car. Mm -hmm. This is all done in front of the catalytic converter, pre-cat. Right. So how do you know if a cat's bad? Because if you're measuring everything up front, you don't know. The cat's an exhaust, right? Well, right. there's a post-cat uh, O2 sensor. So mm -hmm. whatever uh, bad stuff comes out of the motor, and I say bad, it's just not as clean as, as, as the cat can clean it because there are chemicals in the cat. Uh, and the cat's an afterburner. So mm -hmm. if we measure, and it's measured by uh, voltages, and, and uh, if we measure the dirty air in front of the catalytic converter, it will be up and down. It, in other words, uh, in, in, in stoichiometric, which means 14.7 parts of air to one part fuel, uh, mm -hmm. is the perfect air-fuel ratio. So we know that if we get a half a, a volt uh, or three millivolts, uh, too rich, uh, a half a volt's perfect. You know, 500 millivolts is perfect. So, so if we go to 700 millivolts, there's too much fuel. So immediately the O2 sensor reads that and the computer will uh, shut down, will shorten the pulse width of the injectors. Okay, you with me? Yeah. All right, now, sure. now, now if it, when it does, it overcompensates and so it goes too lean. Mm -hmm. And when it goes too lean, the, the O2 sensor says, now I'm at two three-tenths of a vote instead of uh, uh, three millivolts, instead of five millivolts or 500 millivolts. So it's too lean. So the computer says, okay, and it fattens it up. So lean, rich, lean, rich, lean, rich. And you can actually, uh, in any automobile and park uh, with the engine at operating temperature, Ed, you can hold the throttle with the AC off. So you got no, nothing that's, that's drawing any current or any horsepower. And you can hold your foot at, say, 2,000 RPM and watch the gauge. And it will not stay at 2,000. It will go 2,000, uh, 2,100, uh, 1,900. Uh, 2100 and the reason is that it, it is that it's running lit rich lean rich lean of course the engine loves to run rich but uh, that's mm -hmm. dirty air now having said all that the catalytic converter takes whatever's left over of what i just explained and uh, uh, eliminates it because it burns it so uh -huh. the voltage that comes out of the cat should be flatline, just like a heart rate that's, that you don't want somebody on the table to be flatline. It should be mm -hmm. flatline because there should be nothing to burn. There should be not too much air or not too much fuel. It should be whatever, and it could be 0 0.7 volts. It can be 0 0.5. It can be 0 0.4, but it shouldn't be 4, 5, 6, 5, 4, 6, 3, 2, 1. It shouldn't be. It should be flatline. Mm -hmm. If it's not, then the check engine light will come on. And the code will be in the in the car that the catalytic converter is not doing its job because that particular part of the computer measures what goes in the cat in voltages or dirty air, dirty fuel or whatever, and it measures what comes out. So that's how a catalytic converter code is set. Now, does that now? So if a catalytic converter is not flatline, that indicates that the cat's not doing its job. But mm -hmm. if you've got a, a a plug that's misfiring with a bad coil, that engine uh -huh. will start dumping too much fuel, and the catalytic converter may not be able to handle that much fuel, and it can do several things. One, it can damage the converter because it overheats because it's somebody stoking that fire. You've got fuel stoking that fire, and the mm -hmm. catalytic converter is there. It gets hot, hot, and hotter, and as a result, it will literally disintegrate over a period of time that's why it's you know bad to drive a car with a check engine light on if it's right. that if it's that kind of code if it's a if it's a loose gas cap you know but who knows because the same check engine light covers all the above and a hundred other things and, you know you can't have a, it's not like an airplane airplane you can't have a hundred ch different check engine lights because right. the, the driver would be totally you know it, it would something would go off every every uh, uh, block so mm -hmm. so uh, what what can be done, uh, you cannot repair a, a catalytic converter that is not doing its job. So what I would suggest for you before you buy a catalytic converter is to ask the shop to show you the pre-cat mm -hmm. uh, O2 sensor wave form and the post-cat. Okay. You got it? 
Yes, so yes. Because is that, is that, I was hoping it, it was going to be one of them. You know what I mean? One of the O2 sensors. But uh, well, it, it could it could be it could be. But you see, if if the O2 sensor on the on the output, uh, you know, if the O2 sensor happened to be bad on the output uh, on the post cat, and it was stuck at at a constant voltage, then the computer would think, yeah, hey, the converter's doing its great job. Mm-hmm. So and, and I'm sure that there has to be. Uh, some and that's what they call a drive cycle. There has to be some drive cycle, and every time you crank a car up, uh, it goes through this warm up, just like you a jet airplane. A pilot, you know, fires up a plane and goes through air checks and pre checks and what have you. And then the old the old style uh, prop planes have the dual magnetos, and they'll go left mag, right mag, you know, and uh, and check those uh, uh, check for fire for backups, and. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've actually been a friend of mine's got a plane and and uh, and you can actually go from one magneto to another and the engine will run differently because it it's a uh, one mag maybe is more powerful I'm not really sure of that but I, I just say that for your for your education and this is a long answer but it, it it's irrelevant to everyone's car out there today mm-hmm. uh, you you what you want to see is you want to request uh, a post a pre cat. Uh, O2 sensor reading that you, that you can watch in action and a postcat. You got it? Absolutely. Got it. Thank okay, you, Okay, my Bobby. friend. Thank you. Thank you for your kind words. Folks, we're going to take a break. Come back. 888 Let's dive into another car clinic email. Dear Bobby, my vehicle has just gone out of warranty. It has 48,000 miles, and now all maintenance is my responsibility. Can you suggest a maintenance checklist? I'd like to keep this vehicle long term. Assuming your vehicle is about four years old and has just under 50,000 miles on the odometer, we suggest starting with the fluids. Think brake fluid, transmission fluid, and of course coolant. The cooling system is often overlooked. While coolant and cooling systems have evolved through the years, they still need service. Have the cooling system flushed and refilled with a proper antifreeze coolant for your specific vehicle and inspect all belts and hoses. And don't forget the thermostat and radiator cap. Complete the system service with a new Stant Superstat and a new Stant Radiator Pressure Cap. This is a great way to extend the life of all cooling system components and add reliability to your vehicle. Stant products meet or exceed OE quality in both fit and function. Learn more at Stant.com. That's Stant.com. In our latest Talking Tires segment, General Tires Senior Communications Specialist John Robinson explains why it's important to look at a tire's age when considering replacement, not just miles driven on the tires. You have to be careful because sometimes you think, well, I haven't driven those tires too many miles, but if a car sits, you've got flat spotting, you also have dry rot or cracking to the sidewalls of the tire. Just because there aren't a whole lot of miles on the tire doesn't mean that the age, the heat, and the sun haven't negatively affected the tire. So you want to examine the tire, kind of figure out how old the tires actually are, and go from there. Introducing the Grabber HD, a heavy-duty, all-season tire for commercial light trucks and vans that delivers long, even tread life, durability, confident traction, and handling. The Grabber HD features sidewall curb guards to help protect the tire from potential sidewall abrasions, and a rigid outer shoulder provides stability and handling under loaded conditions. For more, go to GeneralTire.com. That's General Tire. Tire.com. You're listening to Bobby Lycus Car Clinic. The airlines like to have sales. Summer getaway sales, holiday sales, winter sales. Truth is, at any moment, some airline somewhere is on sale with low fares to great destinations. Travelocity knows exactly what's going on, who's on sale, to where, and when at over 700 airlines worldwide. We even have this nifty feature that lets you look at a calendar so that you can see exactly the days the great fares are available. Travelocity.com. Go virtually anywhere. AOL keyword, travel. <coughs> guess my temperature. It's 2 a.m. Go to sleep. Come on, one guess. I'm a 98. <coughs> higher. I'm higher at 99. You're getting warmer. Wait, I'm getting warmer. Cold symptoms keeping you from getting a good night's sleep? Get NyQuil. The nighttime sniffling, sneezing, coughing, aching, stuffy head fever so you can sleep better to feel better medicine. Use as directed. One more guess. 100. <coughs> yes. <coughs> Tell her what she's won, Bob. And now back to Bobby Likas Car Clinic and your host, Bobby Likas. And welcome back to Bobby Likas Car Clinic. Call with your car questions at 888 Car Clinic. 
Folks, with more and more Americans taking part in the gig economy, the appeal of freelance or gig work is growing. From well-known ride-sharing platforms like Uber and Lyft to meal and package deliveries, gig services that require a car are rapidly growing. GM's Maven car sharing program launched Maven Gig earlier this year in San Diego, California, and is now expanding. With me on the Car Clinic Hotline is Rachel Botticario, Chief Growth Officer Maven, who's responsible for charting that expansion. Rachel, welcome back to Bobby Likas Car Clinic. Thank you. I'm excited to be back. Well, you should be excited about the growth. You know, as the typical nine to five job becomes less common, the gig economy is a new reality for millions of Americans. And a lot of work in the gig economy requires a vehicle. Share with our car clinic listeners and viewers the changing nature of employment and how Maven and Maven Gig fit into this growing segment of the U.S. economy. Absolutely. So Maven Gig is a new business line that we just custom built for this customer group. And when we looked at what was available to somebody that might want to try out the gig economy, the conventional lease really isn't what they're looking for. They're, they're often only doing this for a few months at a time, so a two- to three-year commitment just didn't make sense. And then if you look at some of the other options out there, um, they often limit you to driving to just one platform. And most of these drivers are really doing this for flexibility, and they want that, uh, that optionality where they can maximize their earnings and work for multiple platforms. So we worked uh, with the rideshare guy, and we also surveyed drivers on a national level. And what we found were four things that really mattered. Um, driving for multiple platforms, that was, that was huge. Unlimited mileage, insurance being included, and flexible terms. And so we've done all of those with Maven Gig. You have a minimum rental of only seven days, and after that it's prorated. So it's very flexible. You can try out the new gig economy, and if after a week it isn't what you want, you just bring the car back. We also include unlimited mileage, and we offer insurance that specifically allows commercial use. And most private car insurance policies don't do that. Or if you were going to go rent a conventional vehicle for a week. It also wouldn't typically allow that. So we knew that was a pain point, made sure we included that. And then on top of that, with uh, the Chevy Bolt, which is one of the vehicles in the program, we pay for their charging. So they have no fuel expense uh, as long as that's the vehicle that they're renting. And that saves them on average somewhere between 70 and $80 a week. So then let me understand, this is an opportunity for those in the gig economy who have a particular gig and need an automobile to rent one and using the Maven gig from General Motors. So essentially, this is an all new twist on rental cars or is that too simple? No, I, I think that it, it is sort of an evolution of that. I, when we looked at the options, structuring this as a rental made more sense than conventional leases. and. When you think about the demand out there, we can offer rentals on this flexible basis because we generally have more people interested in driving um, than we have cars available in a market. So the rental model works really well on both sides of that equation. So you talk about the, the numbers. How do you see the list of possibilities growing over time? And how did the initial rollout in San Diego, how's that gone? So in San Diego, we launched with an all-EV fleet, and they were all taken, I think, within a matter of weeks. We expanded in San Francisco. Uh, Again, we have EVs, but there we brought other cars, um, very focused on fuel efficiency. So we've been including smaller sedans, the Chevy Cruze, the Chevy Malibu, as well as a small crossover, the Trax, um, to make sure that our drivers have choices, but yet they know they'll have affordable fuel expenses or, again, with the Bolt, no fuel expenses. And that is now the model that we're going to pursue in all of our markets. So we're announcing the Los Angeles launch today, but we're also expanding into Detroit, Washington, D.C., Baltimore, Boston, and Phoenix before the end of the year, with the majority of that coming on this fall. We're talking with Rachel Batacheria, Chief Growth Officer for Maven. Rachel, Maven Gig recently announced a a national expansion after, as we said, launching the primarily in California markets. Share with our car clinic listeners and viewers who live all over the U.S., where will Maven Gig be headed next? You mentioned uh, L.A. and Phoenix and Detroit, Baltimore and Boston. These are highly populated metropolitan areas. Is that the initial target area, and where do you see it growing from there? 
So you're right. The initial target area is our dense metro areas, and that's largely driven by where somebody in the gig economy has good earning potential, and that's where we see people needing this kind of a solution. As we're looking ahead into 2018 and 2019, there are additional cities that we would definitely look um, to adding to the list, as well as um, there are, I think, some smaller markets where you might have, as an example, a university population where there's there's good demand for these kinds of services, and those would also be um, high contenders for us to enter. One last question. Uh, the Maven gig offers a, a wide range of vehicles, and you mentioned something about insurance, and if you would go through that and, and finalize that and cap for it, what's offered and what's included in the rental, and you said it's not a lease, so seven days I can opt out if seven days doesn't work. Where do you see that going, and, and uh, what's the average been to date? How's it rolling out, and uh, what does it look like? So to date, what we see is, I think, two groups of renters, and the first are people that try this for a week or two and then decide that the gig approach just isn't for them, or maybe they only wanted to do it for a week you know, to begin with. So that's, that's one group. The other group of renters tend to stay with us for a good period of time, typically several months. And so on, if you take an average, it lands somewhere between those two groups, and you're looking, I think, at about a month and a half. But what we have is essentially two different groups of customers using it in two different kinds of ways. On the insurance question, many of the platforms offer some level of insurance. So what we've done is designed our insurance such that it covers you whenever you are not covered by any platform. And that way, the renter does not need to worry about, well, if I drive for this platform, I have insurance coverage if I drive for this other one, I don't, we eliminate the need for them to do that math. So they do have a deductible, a $1,000 deductible, um, and that matches what's on a lot of the platforms out there. But after that, they don't need to worry. It's covered, um, and we make sure that you won't be hit with unexpected expenses. So that can be a real pain point for someone in, the, in this economy. Mm -hmm. They might not understand that a high mileage charge on a lease can really add up. They might not understand what maintenance looks like when you're driving a lot of miles every day. So what we've included with maintenance, insurance, and unlimited mileage, the goal really is to make this a good experience for somebody that wants to get into the gig economy and not have them hit with, you know, big unexpected bills. It makes a lot of sense. Uh, one final question, a website so that our car clinic listeners and viewers can get more information. So we are actually moving to an app-based solution with this as of this week. Um, so to, to participate, you would download the Maven app, and that's available on both the Android and the Apple platforms, and sign up to be a gig member. Um, you just need a driver's license and a valid credit card, and we will verify you've got a safe driving record and um, buy you into the program. There is a one-time application fee. It just covers that driver's license check. But then you can find the station closest to you and pick out which car you want, pick out what day you want to come get it and a time, and you're set. Well, sounds great. Rachel Botticario, Chief Growth Officer, Maven. Maven gig, folks, check it out. Download the app. Rachel, thank you so much for joining us on Bobby Likas Car Clinic today. Of course. Thank you for having me. Uh, uh, that's really cool. Maven. Uh, yeah, rent a car for a week or for a year or for two weeks. It's your choice. So if you get a gig, now you've got a car, whether or not you own one. That is way cool. Okay, let's go back to the phones. We'll take a call, 888 Car Clinic. Alan, welcome to Bobby Likas Car Clinic. Hi, Bobby, thanks for taking my call. You're Just welcome. a quick insight and a little thought. You were talking about the gas mileage right. going up. Um, my concern is that uh, if a majority of the vehicles are getting 60 miles per gallon, the fuel prices are gonna go up exponentially. The fuel companies are not going to be happy if we get 60 <laughs> miles per gallon. Well, yes, They're you're right. Us now two, yeah. They charge us $2 a gallon. Now we're getting 30 It's going to go up to 4 or 5 if we're getting 60 Well, here's something to think about. California has already, this is three, four, five years ago, has already uh, suggested this. And Oregon said, well, sounds good to me, too. They've suggested a, a mileage tax. Now, get this. So I pay X amount for a gallon of gas. So I fill up my car. Now, you, you're driving a, a Prius, and, and you're getting in 40 miles per gallon. So you tr you've covered more miles with your 10 gallons than I have with mine. 
So you pay more because you have to pay a road tax because you use the roads more than I. So therefore, you're being penalized because you are frugal and you're following the green cycle, which is to buy a, a, a better car, not a better car, but a right. car that gets better gas mileage. And so what's wrong with that picture? It's a way for, well, and here's, what, here's a rub that I have, it's a way for the states to uh, gather taxes on road miles. The, and, and, and the taxes are supposed to fix the highways, but we all know that they're, they're billions of dollars and upside down because that money has been used to go into the general fund versus the road repair. And so I would be for a nickel gas tax. I would be if we were assured and it's by law where it was going. that where it was going. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I may okay. have to go back to driving my 98 <laughs> Winston Cup Thunderbird. I only get two miles to the gallon. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> well, Thanks, it, Bobby. it would have be a, a lot day. of yeah, thank you. It'd be a lot of fun if you did that. We'll take another call from Tony in Nebraska. Tony, welcome to Bobby Likas Car Clinic. <laughs> How are you doing today? I'm doing great, man. How about yourself? Oh, not bad. I got a 2009 Chevy Impala. I, I drive uh, to work every day, and it's a lot of road miles. And the rear tires, this is the second set now on the rear, that I've got cupping on both tires. Uh, it's a little worse on the rear passenger side. Uh, and I don't know if I've got a strut issue or just exactly what I've got. Yeah, I'm with you. Uh, how many miles on it? Uh, around 90,000. Okay, here's what I suggest first before you spend any uh, big bucks. Have the vehicle alignment checked with a four wheel alignment machine. We use a Hoffman machine that is a digital imaging machine and we use mirrors and a computer. We actually get a picture of the each wheel and relative to the other wheels on the car. So we know the wheelbase on the left side, we can X a member from the right front to the left rear, the left front to the right rear. So you can check the X and we can check the caster camber and the toe in on all four wheels. I strongly suggest that you get an imaging alignment machine and that has a printout and see where each wheel is because cupping means out of alignment. Now, ultimately, cupping also means out of balance and that wheel is chop, 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 bouncing on the road, which can be out of balance and or, and or uh, strut. So there okay. you, in that order, alignment check first correct. Wheel balance check first correct. Third, struts. Real gotcha. it. You got it? We got it. Thank, thank you, sir. Appreciate thank you, sir. Show. I appreciate you. And, and folks, Josh here, I want to hold Josh over. Josh, if you don't mind, I want to hold you over until the next segment, uh, which, hey, it's coming up here. And we're going to hear about Power Frame. Your call is at 888 227 2546. When your battery goes dead, everything can come to a stop. Don't take a chance on getting stranded. Stop by O'Reilly Auto Parts and get your battery tested free of charge. If your battery does need to be replaced, O'Reilly Auto Parts can help you find the exact super start battery that fits your car or truck at a guaranteed low price. O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Looking for a new career path? Interested in serving your local community? Become a teacher. American Board for the Certification of Teacher Excellence can help you earn a teaching certificate in a year or less. American Board's online program allows you to set your own schedule for a price that fits your budget. Visit www.americanboard.org, that's americanboard.org, for more information on how you can become a teacher. You're listening to Bobby Likas Car Clinic. Waking up can be a chore, but morning's knocking on my front door. Know just what I'll do, put on a pot of Folgers brew. Mountain grown aroma hits the spot, helps me give all that i got an opportunity. Just got up smiling and happy, the best part of waking up is Folgers in your 
I'm privileged to be involved with Capstone Adaptive Learning, formerly known as United Several Palsy, for over 25 years. Since 1953, Capstone has provided quality care programs for persons with developmental disabilities like autism, cerebral palsy, Down syndrome, and intellectual disabilities. Dr. Sherry White with her team are dedicated to Capstone's clients, and 100% of your contributions stay local to serve those in this community. Go to capstoneadaptivelearning.org to see the difference Capstone makes. Technology moves at the speed of innovation, and today, that's lightning fast. So when you get your hands on the latest tech, don't forget to do the right thing with your old devices. Recycle them. The Consumer Technology Association and its members are making recycling your old tech device as easy as purchasing new ones. Just go to greenergadgets.org, type in your zip code, and you'll instantly find the responsible recycling location closest to your home. You'll also find lots of tips to simplify your recycling, like asking the store where you buy your new TV if they'll haul away your old one. Television sets, video game consoles, smartphones, tablets, they're all recyclable. Don't let them clog up your local landfill. Just visit greenergadgets.org. You're sharp enough to get the latest tech tools into your home. Now be responsible enough to get your old devices to the recycler. That's greenergadgets.org. And now back to Bobby Likas Car Clinic and your host, Bobby Likas. And welcome back. We're talking with Dick in New York about uh, a loss of power with his Cadillac. And he had a converter replaced and they uh, put it on because it was stopped up and obviously and it didn't work. And uh, he drove to, uh, uh, you know, it took him uh, an hour and a half to go 40 miles and went to the dealer. And then the dealer, either, I guess, Dick, the dealer didn't have one or. or no, no, no. I, we took it there to see if they could diagnose what was wrong oh, with okay, it. Okay, okay. And they thought it was the catalytic converter, the wrong one. So anyway, like I say, they, they drilled a hole, or I had them drill a hole before the oh, catalytic converter. Okay, all right, all right. That, that's so here's I, another story. But wait, now, but wait. back in 1978, I bought a brand new Buick, <laughs> okay. and they had a test pipe where you could take the catalytic yeah, converter sure. off and put a test pipe in its place. Yeah. And then in turn, the gas, uh, where, you've, the, where you put the gas in the gas tank, you could only get such a diameter uh, gas. Novel, right, right. Right. So I drilled that out and used regular <laughs> gas. That car never ran so good. Uh, uh, you're bad, man. You're bad. You're telling all the secrets of our industry here. Uh, I, you know, yeah, that test pipe, that was uh, that was like saying, uh, okay, this is uh, – I, I, I won the East Coast region for Bosch. And uh, uh, Gerno K.D. Hecht was the German th that I connected with in Germany. And he sent me some fuel injector test fluid. And it came in a tube from Bosch. I shouldn't tell this story, but that's okay. And, and uh, <laughs> so I got this tube, and it said, Bosch fuel injected test f f fluid. And I opened it up, and it was Jägermeister. <laughs> <laughs> of, course, you, of course, to drink Jägermeister, you have to hold a gun on me, but I, I'll do it. But that's about yeah. the only way. Anyway, get him well, back. You have a good life, Bobby. No, Thanks wait, for wait. the information. Now, wait a minute. I've got a question for you. Okay, go you, ahead. How can you drill a hole in a in front of a catalytic converter that's the size of an exhaust pipe? Because if you drill a hole with a drill, I'm thinking of a half inch hole. That's not going to help an engine. Oh no, it wasn't a half inch hole. Go, guys, more like, uh, I'll say a sixteenth. Oh my. Well, and, and uh, I'm telling you, my, my wife is right here, and she'll say the same thing I did. That car ran crazily coming back. That no is problem crazy. at all. That is crazy. No, uh, go like a go oh, like well, the devil. Okay. We're going up there. You had to stop every now and again, and I thought what the purpose was: a catalytic converter was heating up or something, yeah, or I guess filling so. up or something. I didn't. I, I'm not a diagnosis individual. But coming back phew, like uh, a bullet. <laughs> well, good, good for you. Hey, thanks for sharing that story and and those secrets about <laughs> both the, of them. Yeah, both of them. <laughs> okay, okay, have a good life. We'll talk sometime. Th thank you, Dick. <laughs> <laughs> Bye now. Bye. Oh yeah, a test pipe. Really, really. Let's go to Edith in South Carolina, and then we're going to Ray, and then oh, by the way, now's a good time for you to get in at triple eight. 
Car Clinic, 888-227-2546. And we had a lady that was holding who had a, a question about a black cover. So uh, we, we dropped that call, or she dropped a call. So if you can call back in, I'll be glad to share with you information to restore the black cover on whatever it was that you had. In the meantime, in South Carolina, we have Edith with a, an 06 Ford van. Edith, welcome to Bobby Likas Car Clinic. Uh, good morning. Good morning. We wanted to... Turn off the ability mm-hmm. for the fob to open the key door. Mm-hmm. Could we do that? Well, you could take the battery out of the fob. Oh, okay. Because it, it might be a. Ch- is there a chance that someone else could open the door? No, ma'am. No, you mean you mean and copy your key fob? Is well, that- I, yes. Oh, I mean I with their key. Or whatever, or something. No, ma'am. Uh, it's, it, uh, let me ask a question. What what okay. prompted you to want to not make uh, uh, your to stop your key fob from automatically unlocking the car? In case we left our dogs in the car, afraid oh. someone might be able to open the door. Uh oh! So you leave the car running with the AC on? Yeah, we have. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mm. And, and when you do that, okay, so the, the, and I've seen people do that. So when you leave the car, the dog in the car, uh, and you leave it running, and you get out, you you lock the door with, with you take the keys and lock the door, right? Uh huh. And the, the car is locked and it's running, and you have your dogs inside, and then you walk away. And you're concerned that, so what's your concern? That somebody could come along and open the door? Yes. Well, if it's locked, uh, they cannot open it. And if you have the key fob in your possession and you walk more than three meters away, or not three meters, 30 meters away from your car, uh, well, if you've got the key fob in your possession and and don't unlock the door, somebody else can't use their key fob because it will not work. Those are all coded to the security system of your car. And uh, that doesn't have, it's like, it's like driving down the street and working a, a garage door opener uh-huh. and, and only the only garage door it's going to open is yours because quite candidly every time you open your garage door it changes the code uh, that's the way they met. well in uh, years ago ours would open when another person opened well their, years ago their that's right door. and they changed it and okay. they changed it so that it has now it's random but every time you uh, in fact in fact there there have been many people that i've helped including myself and to learn this, how to program a new car to your garage door opener because you only got 30 seconds to push the button, you know, to yes. get the door, yada, yada, yada. But in a car, that's not the case. In a car, your your key fob is, is programmed to your car. And uh, so you don't need to take your your ability to unlock and unlock the, the door away. That that is a, That is not the right uh, mindset, okay. and, and I would urge you not to do that. Yeah, I would urge you. I would just inform you that if that's not necessary. You lock it. Nobody's going to get in the car unless they break a window or you know. Uh huh. So you you you'll be okay. 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 Thank you. You're welcome. Well, I, I got to say, that's very interesting. That's the first time I've ever had that question to pop up, and I've answered more than a hundred thousand questions. Uh, and some correctly. Triple eight two two seven twenty five forty six South Carolina Ray, welcome to Bobby Likas Car Clinic. Ray is glad to have you join us. And Ray has a <clears throat> a two thousand TNC town and country. And uh, so, what's your what's your challenge with it, Ray? Bobby, um, when I cut it, uh, start to cut the ignition on. The signal lights, all the lights work good, the headlights, everything. As soon as I hit the ignition to crank the car, mm-hmm. it kills the battery. I can cut it by off again and do the same thing. The signal lights work, everything, radio, everything right, right. works good. And as soon as I hit to try to crank the car, it kills the battery. It goes, it maybe turned one time and goes click, 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 like okay. the battery's dead. Have you had the battery tested electronically? Uh, no, it's at my house, and uh, I haven't taken it out to ta- have it tested. Okay, let me say this: a battery can be uh, a battery can make the lights work. Uh, gosh, we had this. We had this. Oh gosh, let me think. We had a car out front that was here. Yes, uh, we had. Yes, yes. This week. We, we had, well, three weeks ago, I got a call from a gentleman uh, that says I got a Mercedes and it's not cranking. And he said, you worked on this car before, but he, he, he had a different name. And, and so finally, I, I after talking with him, I was able to find the car 
uh, and because it belonged to someone else. And it was his girlfriend's car. And uh, the bottom line, uh, he said it, 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 it's erratic and it's cranking. So I made an appointment. Well, he didn't show. Uh, well, that's not a good way to start off a relationship, but that's okay. So he calls me a week later and he said, well, I'm still having trouble with the car. I said, well, where were you last week? He didn't show. So I set another appointment. Well, the next thing I know, uh, the car's out front and they had to get a record. He, you know, he calls and he had to get a record to get it towed in because it now was stuck in his garage. He couldn't get it out. Right. So he called me and said, how do, how, do, how, do I, how do I get it out? I said, just call the record. Those guys can work magic and they can. And so they, they brought it. The challenge was they didn't put it out back because our, our back property is, is sloped. Uh, and I made it that way on purpose so we can roll a car that's, that's you know, AAA towed in into the shop. It's out right. front and it rolls downhill. We can't push a car uphill. So anyway, they went out and he turned the key on, the headlights worked, and you go to hit the starter, nothing. No click, no nothing. No nothing. And, okay. and so we, we just said, well, this, this is a bad starter or a bad circuit or a, a lockout circuit or a security circuit because the starter didn't even go click. So we took out, we said, well, okay, we, we don't have a way to pull it in and, and to push it as a, a manual labor uphill is not good for my guys. It's a good way to hurt your legs. So what we did, uh, what we did was we took a jumper out just on a whim, you know, because the lights worked and the horn worked and all that. Lo and behold, we put a jumper on it, it fired right off and pulled inside. It was not the starter after all. It was the alternator. The battery had 7.4 volts in it, which is enough to make the lights come on. Of course, daytime, you don't know how bright they are, but they, they would come on. And it made all the dash lights light up every time you hit the, the but it wouldn't, it would not trigger the, the starter because the starter had a lockout device that if it's below uh, whatever threshold, eight, nine volts, that it's not going to try to make the starter work because a low voltage will burn up a starter. So, I mean, you could take a brand new car and put a weak battery in it go, and that, that slowly burns the windings up in a starter. So the bottom line, we pulled the car in, and then, I don't know, an hour or two later, I asked Brennan, my general manager, I said, well, what was wrong with the, with the Mercedes that finally showed up? He said, it's an alternator. I said, no, I said, the car had a starter problem. He said, yeah, Bobby, let me tell you the rest of the story. And sure enough, it had an alternator that wasn't charging. So... I said all that to say to you, proper testing is the only way that we were able to find. And I was in my own mind, Ray, I was already set that, oh, this car needs a starter because the person that I had talked to three different times said it won't start. It won't start. Well, it won't start for a lot of reasons. The starter was not, not the problem. It was the alternator. Well, Bobby, I've got, I've had a, uh, one of these um, little battery chargers, yes, not sir. one you hook up when you can charge a battery and then just hook it up. Right. And it does the same thing with that. Well, uh, it, do you have a commercial uh, battery charger or just a trickle charger? Uh, it's, a, it's, it's not one you got plugged in. You charge the battery and you can carry it around with you, and then yes, you sir. just hook it up and not hooked up to anything. So it's what they're called anyway. You, it's supposed to be so you can um, just if you get in trouble somewhere, you can jump start your car. Well, and it, and it, and it, well, and those units do work too because they use a lithium ion battery. And amazing that they're small, but they do work, and we use them at the shop. Well, it it sounds to me two things. Number one, yeah, you could have a starter problem. Right. Uh, and the fact that it goes click click is a low voltage. So right. you could have a bad cable or a bad ground would do the same thing and indicate that, that the starter was bad because it wasn't getting its fair share of voltage. Okay, I got you. All right. So having said that, uh, it, it still goes back to the it still goes back to how do how do we get over this? How do how do you get through this? You're in South Carolina. Uh, I'm in the center of the automotive universe, so we're we're worlds apart. Here's where the commonality comes in. Proper testing, so you, you, get <laughs> you got it. You have to, yeah. I go back to what I would hey. do if, if you were in my shop right now. That I would, I would get out my handy dandy tester and I would test the the uh, the battery, and I would load test the battery. And I will tell you, we have another car. Let me share a quick story with you, and folks, this is really interesting because it it, it affects you as well. Maybe not today, but but when you have a dead battery, it will. So it's worth a listen. We have a car in the shop that belongs to a nice lady that has a lot of cars. She's retired. She doesn't drive often. And 
This car has a, a, a new battery and it's an AGM uh, battery, so it's a glass mat battery, and it's a really great battery that we put in the car, uh, you know, six or eight months or a year ago, I don't know. But anyway, long story short, uh, it came in a dead battery. Of course, she doesn't drive the car, and that's the reason the battery was dead, at least we thought. So I have, for use on my collector cars, my Porsche, my Viper, and my, my trailer, I have this extreme unit that I've talked about on the air that's a computerized, uh, and it's not a trickle charger, it is a computerized charger that pings the battery every 20 seconds and determines the state of health of the battery. And if it's charged, it doesn't charge, but it desulfates and decalcifies the plates because it has alternating currents. So right. it sits there going back and forth with three little LEDs, you know, up and down, up and down, up and down. And then every 20 seconds, the battery test comes on. And then there's a 25%, 50, 75%, and, and then 100% and 100% charge. So we hooked up after we charged her battery, and, and her car has a, a cutoff where you open the deck lid and you switch off the, 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 so I know there was nothing drawing the battery because it's like taking the battery out of the car because I turned the car off. Right. We, I hooked up my handy dandy unit that I've used for eight years on all my classic cars and her battery after a week would still not go above 75% charge. So I said, well, maybe maybe this unit doesn't charge AGM batteries, but I've got an AGM battery in my Viper because I don't want to, it's hard to get to the battery. So I, I plugged my unit back into the my Viper, and, and of course they all start off at 75%, and, and in the morning, there it is, 100%. So it's cool. So then we took a brand new battery, just like it's in her car, and hooked up our trickle charge to it, and it was a brand new battery, it started off at 75%, and it wasn't overnight, you know, because this is a real moderate mile charger. Next morning, that AGM battery came up to 100%. So that told me that it wasn't my unit. It told me something was wrong with that battery. And yet our tester said her battery is okay, but it wasn't okay. And I found that it wasn't okay because my computer battery uh, uh, maintainer trickle charger you could call it that but it's more sophisticated than that would right. never would never see a hundred percent so while i don't know what is wrong inside her battery i warranted her battery anyway we're just going to put another battery we've, we've got it still out there and uh in fact it's still hooked up to my little trickle charger right outside and uh later i called it a trickle charger but the, anyway so yeah. so yeah. anyway testing get it tested that's what you have to do and uh don't throw parts on it and don't take anything off the car to have it tested test it in place because that's the only way you can probably test electronic circuits and with that i'm out of time Bobby, thank you so much. Thank you, Ray. Bye-bye. <laughs> Folks, uh, gas prices, uh, I'll have to give to you during the next hour of Bobby Likas Car Clinic. Also, I invite you to call in during the next hour coming up of Bobby Likas Car Clinic at 888-227-2546. I'm Bobby Likas. Likas, you'll love us. This is Bobby Likas Car Clinic. Bobby Likas Car Clinic is a copyrighted presentation of Car Clinic Productions Incorporated and may not be reproduced or rebroadcast without the express written approval of Car Clinic Productions Incorporated. Folks, recently we had a four sale on the 2014 Nissan Frontier in the shop. The customer said the vehicle wasn't running well, nothing specific, but fuel mileage was down and the vehicle had lost its zip. As he explained, it's a manual transmission, so I know what it should feel like, and it's just not right. The suggested maintenance and ignition service were up to date, and there were no trouble codes. So what was the problem? The answer lies with today's complex engines. While the maintenance schedule was on time, engines today are prone to carbon deposit formation, and fuel system cleaning is a key piece of the puzzle. Professional fuel system cleaning is an option, but a less expensive alternative is the use of a pour-in fuel system cleaner. We use Berryman B12 Chem Tool in the shop. It features Berryman's proprietary high energy solvent or HEST technology. We pour a bottle of Berryman B12 Chem Tool into the Frontier, and after just one tank of gas, MPG improved and the vehicle regained its zippiness. For more information, drive to BerrymanProducts.com. That's BerrymanProducts.com. You're listening to Bobby Likas Car Clinic. If you're familiar with the Kulsevud section of the newspaper, 
you probably understand this message quite well. You see, in the Kulsford section, everything gets abrupted. Consonants, vowels, prepositional phrases, the very building blocks of our language are thrown right out the window. And that makes it difficult when you're trying to sell your car. You've got a limited amount of sps to work with, and by the time you abrivet the description of your car down to a couple of fragmented sentences, it sounds less like a car and more like a bluk sedan with like new condition le mules. No wonder more people are selling their cars through eBay Motors. They can post unlimited text and photo descriptions, and with a nationwide marketplace, they're likely to sell it for more. Plus, booth parties can be covered by eBay's vehicle protection program. Buyers are happy, sellers are happy, and no one's abrivating. eBay Motors, a better way to sell your car. Bobby Lyka's car clinic begins at six minutes after the hour. Bobby Lyka's car clinic begins at six minutes after the hour. Bobby Lyka's car clinic begins at six minutes after the hour. Bobby Lyka's car clinic begins at six minutes after the hour. Bobby Lyka's car clinic begins at six minutes after the hour. Countdown to three minute mark, five, Four, three, two, one, mark. Bobby Lyka's car clinic begins at six minutes after the hour.
Bobby Lycus Car Clinic begins at six minutes after the hour. Bobby Lycus Car Clinic begins at six minutes after the hour. Count down to one minute mark. Five, four, three, two, one, mark. Count down to 30 second mark. Five, four, three, two, one, mark. Count down to 10 second mark. Five, four, three, two, one, mark. Welcome to Bobby Lycus Car Clinic, live via ABC Radio Satellite Services. If you have a car question for Bobby, call now at 1-800-264-5454, toll free from anywhere in America. And now, here's your host, Bobby Lycus. And thank you, Marty White. Folks, welcome to this edition of Bobby Lycus Car Clinic. Right along with me this Saturday, and let's talk cars. Uh, speaking of cars, is your car ready for the back-to-school time? So think about it. And if it's not, you need to get your car in and have it checked over. Now, not necessarily a, a highway check, which indicates you're going to go for a short trip, and that normally is the belts and hoses and check the tire pressure. What we perform at our 46-year automotive service shop is an annual inspection, and there's 80 points, and there's a bulletized uh, inspection of the automobile under, around, the brakes, all the safety factors. So if you're in Pensacola area, Welcome to our business. If you're across the country, then you might want to consider what's called a pre-purchase vehicle inspection, which is very similar to the type of inspection your car needs to make it roadworthy back to school. This segment of Bobby Likas Car Clinic is brought to you by O'Reilly Auto Parts. Folks, summer's heat can be draining on your vehicle's battery. Rising temperatures can cause battery fluids to evaporate. Stop by O'Reilly Auto Parts and have your battery tested for free. And if your battery does need to be replaced, the professional parts people at O'Reilly Auto Parts will help you find the exact super start battery that fits your vehicle at a guaranteed low price. O'Reilly Auto Parts, better parts, better prices every day. Triple Eight Car Clinic, your calls online when I come back. Like us, you'll love us. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. If your vehicle isn't stopping like it used to, visit O'Reilly Auto Parts for the Summer Break Deals event. Take advantage of the O'Reilly Auto Parts Do It Right rebate and get a $25 O'Reilly gift card by mail when you buy a set of Brake Best Select pads and a pair of rotors. O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Limit supply. See store for details. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. When it comes to your car battery, you expect it to work. Turn the key and go. Thanks to PowerFrame Grid technology, you can trust your battery to be there start after start. Batteries with PowerFrame Grid technology are tested to provide superior cranking power with up to 70% better electrical flow than other grid designs. Look for PowerFrame on the outside for true strength on the inside. Visit Advance Auto Parts or CarQuest for a battery with PowerFrame Grid technology or to learn more, go to PowerFrame.com. That's PowerFrame.com. Diablo Sport Tuning Systems boost your vehicle's power without popping the hood. 
But don't take my word for it. NHRA racer Mark Tobiner has used Diablo Sport since 2001 and currently has an Intune i2 on his daily driver. Bart, the first to eclipse the seven-second mark with an S550 Mustang, knows horsepower. Says Bart, I'll continue to use Diablo as they lead the way in aftermarket handheld and tuning products. Drive to DiabloSport.com. It's Mosquito Awareness Week, and Dynatrap has three simple steps to help you stay safe from mosquitoes this summer. One, remove standing water in planters and other places water can collect. Two, wear light-colored long-sleeve clothing and apply repellents when outdoors. Three, inspect and patch holes and screen doors and windows. Head to Dynatrap.com slash Mosquito Week for more tips and tricks on keeping mosquitoes at bay all summer long. You're listening to Bobby Lycus Car Clinic. Another lending success story from LendingTree.com. Car dealers like playing games. They play percentage points, they play markups, but I don't like playing with my money. So I got my auto loan through LendingTree.com. I filled out one simple form, a marketplace of banks and lenders competed over it, and I got four offers back within hours. After all, the car buying game is a lot easier to win when you're holding all the cards. LendingTree.com. When banks compete, you win. For additional information and state license disclosures, please visit our website located at LendingTree.com. Driving has a rhythm all its own. Don't wreck it with a text. Before you get behind the wheel, silence your phone. Or better yet, designate a texter. For more text-free driving tips, visit StopTextStopRex.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. And now, back to Bobby Likas Car Clinic and your host, Bobby Likas. Okay, let's get started with this hour of Bobby Likas Car Clinic. Sit back and ride along with me and uh, let's talk cars. But we can also talk about oils and fuels and uh, differentials and all the other things that uh, many of you would say, oh, that's boring. Well, it, it, it's not boring. It is boring. It can be boring un unless it lands in your backyard. And then if it does, you got a problem. And that's where I can help you. So uh, really, my goal today is uh, to have fun. My goal today is to share with you buzzwords that you can use when you're going to your local service provider, whether that's a chain store, an independent, or a dealership right there in your own hometown. And I see that Kevin's calling from New York, so definitely we're going to uh, share information that will give uh, and help Kevin uh, have the buzzwords that, so that he can do what? Better communicate with his local service provider, and that's what it's all about. After all, when you leave a doctor's office, you, you know, you you think, well, I wish I'd asked the doctor. I wish I'd known what questions to ask the doctor. That's the real secret. And so that's what I can help you with. And Miss Jan, to that end, will take your calls at 888 Car Clinic. Again, that number is easy to remember 888 227 2546. Pardon me. I did have my coffee. 227 2546. Let's go to New York. And invite Kevin into Bobby Likas Car Clinic. Kevin, thanks for holding. Uh, how are you doing this morning? Good, thank you. And you? I'm fine, thank you, sir. What can I do to help you? I bought a 2013 Honda CRV. In fact, I just picked it up yesterday. Okay. Certified, and uh, the brakes grind. Now I took out two other ones to test drive them, and the same thing happened. So when I called them back, they said uh, they knew about it, but they want me to drive it for a while, and the noise will go away. Oh. Really? I don't believe that. I don't believe that. Uh, I mean, it, I no. mean, really, when you buy it, when the car was new, did it have br grinding brakes on it? I don't think so. Right. Well, right. It, it to me, uh, gosh, you, n let me let me back up. Did you drive another one, and it, and it also had the same noise? Two other ones. Well, you got drove another 2013. I drew, uh, drove a. Uh, 2014. Oh, they must be using they, a... That dealer tells me it's because it's been sitting. Well, yeah, but after you drive it for three miles, and I mean city miles, and stop, mm -hmm. uh, and stop and start and stop and start, you can actually, uh, Kevin, you can look at the rotors through the wheels, 
because most wheels are open enough that you can see the rotors. And if the rotors do have that, that rusted surface, then yes, I agree with the dealer. That, that's true. And to that end, every time, without exception, uh, I wash my car, and I'm the only one that I wash, and I don't just wash, I detail my car. When I'm, when I'm finished with the car, because I've cleaned the wheel so thoroughly, immediately I drive it from my house a half a block to the cul-de-sac and turn around, and I ride the brakes. And I only drive a half a block. That is to dry the brakes off and remove the film of oxidized rust that occurs on my brakes. And, and mm -hmm. uh, otherwise... Not only do the, cal do the, do the discs look rusty, which they are, but that rust will build up and can cause the pad to stick to uh, the, uh, the, the rotor. I've had that happen in my Viper because I would clean it and then I would pull it in the garage and it would sit. And I didn't drive it much and it would sit for a week and I'd go to back it up and let the clutch out and, and bam! It, the, the, the pad would be stuck to, uh, and, in fact, I actually had one of my pads to be ripped off of its hard back uh, steel counterpart because of that uh, process because I cleaned it so well. Having uh -huh. said that, having said that, what the dealer's telling you is true, and to that end, that's why a lot of cars, when you back out of the drive in the morning, will... <laughs> first time in the morning and they're okay the rest of the time because of oxidized especially i live in florida so we're in the tropics so there's a lot of moisture in the air having said right. that you could drive it three to five miles and all that is worn off if you you know if you're stopping and going you can't just go down the highway because you don't use your brakes so i guess right. i guess two things i would number one look at the rotors visually and you can see them through the front wheels, unless it, they got a full cap, and I doubt they have, and see what the rotor surface looks like. And if it's rusted and pitted and what have you from sitting, I agree the dealer's right. But how far did the dealer recommend that you drive before this? Before they said this noise would go away? Well, he didn't. He said drive it for a while, and I said, well, I drove it at least 60 miles yesterday in city traffic back and forth. Oh, well. well. And, and also on the highway, well, I, I, mostly I, in the city. you got to change pads. Yeah. You got to The pads are only too hard. I mean, they probably put, they, either the factory, uh, it's a 13, so it's, a, it's three years old. How many miles on the vehicle? 26,000. Well, see, it's got the original pad, so the pad is a little crystallized. The pad is a, has a little bit of particles and dirt and what have you from normal wear and tear, and it's there, mm -hmm. that's down there in the dirt. You know, quite candidly, I don't see how brakes work as well as they do up there. That they're exposed to everything, uh, and right. so so what what's gonna what it's gonna take it's gonna take another set of pads for that car. And you just bought this vehicle, so if it's a complaint and they're 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 a good dealership, they would change the pad composition and put a another pad. And if the Honda pad's too hard, which it obviously is, they need to put an aftermarket. Well, let's see what a good aftermarket pad would be. Uh, you have O'Reilly Auto Parts stores there in New York. No, we have Advanced Auto and AutoZone. Well. Uh, go to Advanced Auto Parts, uh, talk to uh, one of their, their counter men, and say, well, give, me the, give me what is an OEM compatible brake pad for this Honda. And, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and they, they have a catalog that will break down individually uh, the, the A, Bs, and Cs of brake pads. Don't buy by price. And also, mm -hmm. a ceramic pad uh, is definitely... Uh, you, you know, Thermal Quiet, I, I'll tell you, Thermal Quiet is a Wagner Thermal Quiet. You can't go wrong with that pad. So if I were, if I had, if I were, had your car, and uh, then definitely you should be able to buy a Wagner Thermal Quiet from that auto parts store. And then you, they'd want to take, you'd want them to take a light cut on the, on the disc to renew its surface. And a light cut is just a 2000s cut, but it's enough to deglaze the surface and put on the Wagner Thermal Quiet, lubricate the, the uh, slides, uh, and I always use new hardware. That's like 10 or $12, but Carlson makes all the, well, they make 85% of all the hardware, even though they're different brand names. And the hardware is the, it means the little uh, stainless steel slides, and we do that on every job. We put new hardware on every job and knock on wood, or take that back. We haven't had a brake problem in five years in this company. 
because mm. we do these, we practice exactly what I just told you. And I will tell you, uh, we used to have nightmares uh, with brakes that were too hard and too soft and all the above. The harder the pad, the more pressure it takes to stop the car. The softer the pad, the more abrasive the pad. And that's what Mercedes uses, a soft abrasive pad after 25, 30,000 miles or, or 40. Uh, historically, you just throw the pad away and throw the rotor away and put a new rotor on, and, and Mercedes rotors are very inexpensive, uh, uh, cheaper, than, cheaper than some GM cars. So the bottom line, for you to be happy with this vehicle, don't let this go. If you like the vehicle, change the pads, put a thermal quiet, Wagner thermal quiet on it, have a machine, that, and, and if you have to buy the pads, go ahead and do it, because it's that, not that big a deal, but they should, do, they should provide the labor for you to make you a happy customer, because you just bought the car from them. Any questions? Well, the thing is, it's Honda certified, so they can't put anything but Honda parts on it. Well, yeah, wait, wait. They, they, they that's right, if, 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 well, but they can't dictate to you as the owner of the car what you want them to install they just don't warranty those brake pads okay it's got you know it's like it's like they can't tell you what kind of gas to put in your vehicle they, right. it, you know it, it, it calls for uh low uh low uh, octane 87 octane but they can tell you to buy sit go or standard oil or or uh or sh a shell they can't dictate for any car maker to dictate the brand that you have to use a product they have to give you the product. That's called the Magnuson Moss Warranty Act. Look it up, Magnuson Moss Warranty Act. And that is not only for automobiles, it's for everything from uh, insincorators to dishwashers to, to what have you. A manufacturer can't dictate what kind of brand as long as the brand that you use meets or exceeds the manufacturer's specifications. It's a what, what do you call that, a Magnuson? Magnuson Moss warranty act google it okay okay my friend hey nice talking with you kevin and and uh, don't live with this change the pads you're never going to be happy and you just bought this car you deserve to be happy with it right okay thanks my friend thank you very much you're welcome very much triple eight two two seven twenty five forty six let's go to texas and talk with shane let's see shane drives a an F-150, a 2012 F-150. Shane, welcome to Bobby Likas Car Clinic. Where do you live in Texas? Good morning. Good morning. I live in, I'm in East Texas. In East Texas. Yes, sir. Uh, I landed in Midland, Texas one time, and I was exiting the plane, and I and down the stairs, they didn't have a ramp at that time, or, or for that particular uh, gate, and I could look out and I could see miles and miles of Texas. It was the flattest place I've ever seen in my life. Shane, you stay right there. We'll have a break. I'll take your call when I get back. Your car and your life have a lot of moving parts. And your car's battery is what keeps it all going. Here's something to keep in mind. While all batteries may look the same on the outside, it's what's inside that matters. So be sure to choose a battery with power frame technology inside. It's stronger, more durable, and keeps you going longer. That means you can count on a battery with power frame to be there start after start. Here's another reason to feel good about choosing a battery with power frame inside. It's manufactured using the latest sustainable processes. You're moving fast, and you don't want anything to slow you down, especially an unreliable battery. So the next time you need to replace your car's battery, make sure you choose one with power frame technology inside. Look for power frame on the outside and know there's true strength on the inside. Time to go to our car clinic inbox. Jim in Indianapolis writes, Bobby, I have a 2010 Ford Explorer, and it's taking more than 10 minutes for the engine to warm up, whereas it used to take six. I hear you guys talking about stant thermostats. What makes them so special? Thanks, Jim. You probably heard me talking about the Superstat in particular. Superstat is a premium-grade thermostat that performs better and lasts longer. The Superstat features heavy-duty springs that help return it to a closed position to prevent cold running. A larger heat motor helps control 
control engine temperature while a heavier gauge steel housing gives it a high-end feel. Just hold one yourself and you'll feel the difference. The Superstat is American-made and comes with a limited lifetime warranty. You definitely don't want to compromise when replacing your Explorer's engine thermostat. The Superstat helps maintain proper air-to-fuel ratio, which maximizes fuel economy, keeps tailpipe emissions in check, and provides optimal performance. Learn more about the Superstat at your local auto parts store or at stant.com. You're listening to Bobby Lycus Car Clinic. Telephone team. From Geico Auto Insurance. When calling Geico to switch your car insurance, you will not need acetaminophen, naproxen, indomethacin, ibuprofen, a cold compress, an on-call acupuncturist, or any other pain remedy. In 15 minutes, you could save 15% or more. If it were any more painless, you could do it in your sleep, which is theoretically possible since we offer complete 24-hour service. Call 1-800-947-AUTO, 1-800-947-AUTO. Geico Direct, the sensible alternative. When you purchase the latest TV, tablet, or smartphone, don't forget to do the right thing with your old ones. Recycle them. The Consumer Technology Association and its members are making recycling your old devices as easy as buying new ones. Just go to greenergadgets.org, type in your zip code, and you'll instantly find the recycling location closest to your home. You'll also find recycling tips, like asking the store where you buy your new TV if they'll haul away your old one. Don't let your old tech tools clog your local landfill. Just visit greenergadgets.org. And now back to Bobby Likas Car Clinic and your host, Bobby Likas. And welcome back to Bobby Likas Car Clinic. Great show today. Call with your car questions at 888 Car Clinic. With us on the hotline now is Ralph Hogan, host of RMD Garage, which premiered on Velocity Network on August the 2nd with a 19, get this folks, 58 Chevrolet Apache Dream Catcher. A 1962 Bel Air bubble top. Now, that was a beautiful automobile. And a 57 Lincoln Continental. Ralph, that's quite a lineup. Welcome to Bobby Likas Car Clinic. Glad to have you in the house. Thanks, Bobby. Good morning, and thank you for having me. You know, you and I are on the same page here, and I don't want to get too much into that. But before we dive into RMD Garage, please do share with our car clinic listeners and viewers about the Ralph Hogan origin story. It's safe to say you've come from humble beginnings. Talk to us about the path that you took to eventually find success. Yeah, you know, uh, you know, I struggled growing up as a kid. I was, uh, I was kind of fought the system of the school and. You know, before you knew it, I dropped out, and I once I did that, I had to grow up fairly quick and started washing cars at the age of 16, and then found myself really at the at rock bottom at the age of 19. Uh, but all I knew, I, all I knew how to do was really, uh, you know, wash cars, detail cars the way I did it, and uh, that passion just kind of came through. And I said, I'm going to do something on my own. I'm going to succeed or fail, but whatever it is, it's going to be on my own. And I started R&D, which is Ralph Mobile Detailing, and with. Uh, with a little mobile trailer that I was able to get on credit, I started to hit the streets and transform that into this amazing empire that I have now. Congratulations on that, Ralph. Why did you choose the automotive industry as the field to make your mark and become a success? Uh, obviously, uh, you love cars, right? I love cars, Bobby, and the truth is that we all love cars, and that's what really drew me in, the affinity for the automobiles and the affinity and the stories we all have with them. I'm a passionate person, man, and when I saw when I saw somebody cry when they picked up their car after getting it done, I knew I had to do this for a living. I knew I had to be in that service field where I would be able to provide somebody with that happiness. Well, again, congratulations on that. Let's fast forward. Now, here we are in 2017. You're the owner of both RMD Group, which is a marketing company, and RMD Garage, one of the hottest restoration shops in the country. Tell car clinic listeners and viewers about the work each of those entities does. So, you know, the, the good thing is they both complement each other. And the group, the group really builds a lot of the SEMA exhibits, builds a lot of automotive shows. We've done auto shows across the nation, ride and drive, a lot of stuff that we both uh, are used to and love and see. And you wonder, well, who does it? And then I get a chance to build uh, some amazing dream builds, you know. I get a chance to do some cars that I've always wanted to do in my life and I get a chance to build some cars for some clients that have dreamed of having a 1955 Bel Air Rose Gold, you know, all modernized uh, 
but with all the beautiful um, lines that it had in 1955. Well, that's really cool. Now you've caught the attention of Velocity Network, and you're starring in your own show, RMD Garage. How did that come about, Ralph? You know what? You know, it was so interesting. They found me on YouTube, and um, they called me up, and I said, hey, you know what, guys? I have something that's completely different. You need to come and see this. I, 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 I have a marketing agency that sells some amazing stuff, and I love doing cars. And so they shot down here, and we're just blown away with our facility, our work ethic, our passion, and most of all, um, the camaraderie we had and, and, and the quality of work we're producing. So they just, they, I think we all had a, a good partnership to kind of say, let's move forward. Well, that's great. We're talking with Ralph Holguin, host of RMD Garage on Velocity TV. And folks, you can watch RMD Garage every Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Time and 9 p.m. Pacific Time. Ralph, what can viewers of RMD Garage expect to see each week? Well, you know what? I think one thing that sets us apart is that. Like I said, the, the, the group really provides a great ambiance for everything that comes in and all the clients, right? So you're going to get a little peppering of, of doing, for instance, we did Dave Kendig's rig, uh, his entire marketing rig, and Dave is one of the best builders in the world. And for us to get a chance to build his rig um, really kind of uh, gives us that opportunity. But you'll also see uh, some beautiful builds. You'll see the passion. You'll see the design process. It's really, really important for us and myself to, to really showcase the design process on the interior, on the exterior, and really transforming some of these cars. You mentioned that you love the bubble top. I happen to be, I happen to be, in a, uh, uh, that's one of my most favorite, favorite cars is the 1962 bubble top. And we transformed that into a beautiful, beautiful modern piece that I think everyone's gonna absolutely love it. Uh, I think the lines on the bubble top are so unusual. And when you think about classic cars and, um, and muscle cars, they're, they're kind of either bulbous or edgy or kind of bulky. But that car is, is the opposite, and, and the lines do transcend into uh, coming forward. I think that one of the secrets that appears from me to you and what I see that you're doing, Ralph, that's so important is, is you're allowing and you're providing not only a service, but you're keeping the classic car and the restoration industry alive and moving that toward the future. And in doing so, and what, what I admire about what your bills is the fact that you may look at a bubble top as a 62 model Chevrolet, but underneath uh, it, it drives like a new Corvette or a, a new car. And I think that's really an interesting concept that a lot of people might not know when they see classic cars. Tell us some of the favorite redesigns that your shop has completed. Okay, so you talked about the 58 Apache. So now this is a beautiful truck. It's a workman's truck. And, and, and I happen to be, I happen to love trucks in the way they they, um, they look, but the, the fleet side that we built, I mean, it has everything that you would want from a 1958 truck. But when we talk about the inside, right, when we talk about the ergonomics, we talk about the mechanics, the nuts and bolts, we're talking about a TCI chassis, stacked out, sport chassis, ready to take on the auto for autocross. And then you got an LS engine, LS3, 540 horsepower. You got your nine inch rear end, you got all your disc brakes. So guys, essentially what you're doing is you're taking all the beauty, but you got all the reliability. And that's really what is happening right now with a lot of these resto mods. They look beautiful and they retain all the lines, but you're reliable. Like you said, Bobby, you can jump in, head over to Vegas, head over to wherever you need to go and not worry about breaking down on the road. That's one of the biggest fears is breaking down on the road in one of your beautiful, classic, very expensive cars. Uh, no question about it. Now, now uh, that you're a big success, what vehicles will we find in Ralph's personal garage? Oh, man, we're excited. I got two 1954 Corvettes. One is absolutely original, 775 miles. And another one we're going to make into a beautiful modern Corvette. I think the Corvette guys are going to probably hate me, but somebody had already messed with this car, and I want to revive it and bring it back to life and give it its glory. And the other car that I'm going to be driving is a 1958 Impala that we call Ebony. She's absolutely gorgeous, and I can't wait for you guys to see it. Fantastic. Ralph Hogan, host, RMD Garage. 
what a fantastic future that you have and what is really fantastic for me is the fact that you being the car guy enjoy your work you come across that way on car clinic one more time rmd garage folks airs wednesday nights at 9 p.m eastern and 9 p.m pacific time on the velocity network ralph great to have you on bobby like car clinic thank you so much for taking the time and sharing your life with us today uh, Bobby, thank you. My pleasure. And thanks for having me. Yeah, what a cool guy. You know, we talk about classic cars, and of course, Ralph, a car guy, as I, uh, is really into what we call retro mods. And a retro mod uh, is uh, like a 55 Chevrolet. It looks like a 55 Chevrolet, but it's got all new uh, uh, LS3. Uh, 525 horsepower Chevy engines and automatic transmissions and steering control. I mean, all the options and things. So, you, you know, imagine that you've got a classic car that drives like a brand new automobile. So you have the best of both worlds. And speaking of the best of both worlds, I want to share with you a, a recent press release on Faraday Future because I've been watching Faraday as I have Tesla. We've talked about that at length here on Car Clinic. So uh, this is about Faraday. There, Faraday Future announced recently that it had signed a lease on a turnkey manufacturing facility in Hanford, California, south of Fresno. The company has been hyping its plans to build a luxury electric vehicle called a FF91 that would compete with high-end Teslas, but it has struggled with funding and production. And the press release goes on to say that Faraday recently pulled out of plans to build a massive factory north of Las Vegas, as well as plans to negotiate a deal for another new factory location in Vallejo, California. And according to the LA Times, Faraday Future received an emergency loan for an investor, from an investment firm to the tune of $13.75 million, using a claim to the company's Gardenia, California headquarters as collateral. The company will need to raise millions more to deliver market-ready FF91s by the end of next year, as it has promised to do so. Just like Elon Musk promises the, 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 the new SUV, but the bottom line is none of them are on the streets to this date, in, in mass at least that is. So the Faraday release goes on to say, and Stephen Cross, who is the Faraday future uh, chief uh, operating officer, the CEO, uh, told the Times that having an assembly line will attract additional investors as it makes more real for them. Now, the warehouse being leased was originally a tire factory, first built by Armstrong Rubber in 1962 and purchased by Italian tire maker Pirelli in 85. Pirelli shut the factory down in 2001 for economic reasons, and tenants have been various since then, most recently, including a potential pot growing operation. Now, this month, the electric vehicle manufacturer invited its employees out to the site, and more than 300 showed up, according to a Faraday Futures press release, to help begin the process of site cleanup and embrace the company's new manufacturing home. The company cited the turnkey nature of the Hanford factory, which does seem like a better fit for Faraday Future than previous plans to build an all-new facility. Faraday Future will continue the process of site preparations, including planning, refurbishment, and permitting, a company press release noted. Now, following the move out of current tenants in late November, the company expects significant movement to ramp up on site in early 2018. And we're going to see whether or not this really comes to pass or not, folks. The bottom line, it's a huge effort, to, as you know, to start a car company. Uh, but the bottom line, Tesla's done it, so Faraday can perhaps take some of that information and, and go forward. Tesla's already, uh, Elon Musk has already said that anyone can use his, uh, his rights as long as they build a car in the EV uh, arena. So Faraday's facility is a million square feet and will employ up to 1,300 workers uh, over three shifts over time. Faraday Futures Vice President of Global Manufacturing, Dag Reckhorn, also said our new production facility is the latest demonstration of our commitment to get FF91s on the road by the end of 2018. And despite significant headwinds on the path ahead of us, we are laser focused on that one key milestone. Got to say, it'll be most interesting to watch how Faraday competes with Tesla. Okay, back to the phones. When I come back, Jan will take your call to Triple Eight Car Clinic, put you in the queue, and I will put you on the air when I come back. We recently had the opportunity to work on a 2005 F-150. The vehicle owner was complaining about brake noise. His pads and shoes were not terribly old, but did have some miles on them. 
He's in the delivery service business, which puts his vehicle through a lot of stop-and-go traffic. This works the brakes really hard and can often lead to glazing and excessive brake dust. After performing a visual inspection, we clean the brakes using Berryman Chlorinated Brake Parts Cleaner. It's the first VOC-compliant chlorinated brake cleaner available in over 20 years. Berryman Chlorinated Brake Parts Cleaner is designed to stop brake squeal. It's the strongest carb-compliant brake cleaner available and dries completely without residue. As part of the process, we were sure to clean the pivot and shoe pad contact points along with the brake spring hardware and self-adjuster mechanisms. Brake dust gets everywhere, and a proper cleaning on an annual basis will lead to longer brake life and better brake performance. Learn more about the new Berryman Chlorinated Brake Parts Cleaner at BerrymanProducts.com. That's BerrymanProducts.com. You're listening to Bobby Lycus Car Clinic. More than one million wild animals are killed each year illegally. Poaching is a major threat to our country's wildlife. I'm Tom Barry. I'm an actor with a desire to preserve living space for wildlife. The Humane Society Wildlife Land Trust does just that, works with private landowners to protect wildlife to preserve natural habitats. To learn more or to work with the Humane Society Wildlife Land Trust, call 800-729-SAVE. That's 800-729-SAVE or visit wildlifelandtrust.org. Thank you. Did you know 26 million Americans have kidney disease and most don't know it? The day I was diagnosed, I didn't know what to do. I called the National Kidney Foundation, and the young lady who answered stayed on the phone with me and walked me through step by step. She, too, was surviving kidney disease. and She showed me there could be life after kidney disease. Visit the National Kidney Foundation at kidney.org now. You know. We're a land of cynics. We don't believe anything anymore. You know why? Because we've been told we've won a million dollars, that it's new and improved, that it slices and dices, that our favorite singer is still alive, that we'll be prosecuted if we cut off the tags, and of course that everything is backed with a 100% money back guarantee. So when we hear the words customer service, we don't believe it. Travelocity isn't surprised if you're a little skeptical when they say they have excellent customer service. And that there's actually a pleasant face behind this website. A living, breathing person with a supercharged computer full of answers. Someone who's willing to help when you get lost. And most of all, someone that will actually pick up the phone when you call with a question or a concern. Customer service is just another example of how Travelocity puts you in control of travel. Chances are you'll never have to use it, but it's good to know it'll be there if you need it. Travelocity.com. Go virtually anywhere. And now back to Bobby Likas Car Clinic and your host, Bobby Likas. And welcome back to this segment of Bobby Likas Car Clinic. Um, I, I would ask that Bill and Larry, who are in the queue, to hold. I'm coming to you next. And, and Larry, you'll be first up from Missouri. Uh, but first, I want to share with you uh, uh, what I see as an epidemic. And uh, remember this, because if you're driving an automobile that has m my favorite design, like the EcoBoost Ford or uh, Audis or Mercedes or GM cars that has GDI, gasoline direct injection, uh, you are currently driving a vehicle that has a self-destruct, uh, or not destruct, I'll, I'll take that back. It, it has a, a destructive force going on inside that engine that is caused by the emissions systems and that do not work with the current design of gasoline direct injection. What's direct injection as compared to what it was before? Port injection is where you spray fuel behind the intake valve into the exhaust, into the intake port like the lungs of the engine. Oof, oof, oof. You, engine breathes in air and gasoline is sprayed into the intake port. Gasoline direct injection is where you spray that gas directly into the combustion chamber, which is a more efficient way to extract horsepower, torque, and gas mileage from that same engine. The challenge with that is that when you take away the port injection, you still have the oil from the PCV system, and you still have the oil from the valve guide that cokes the back of the intake valve. 
And what happens is this layer of oil and then it gets mixed with exhaust because EGR valves, exhaust gas recirculation valves, put 7% of the exhaust back into the mouth of the engine. So here you've got a wet lung. I call it the black lung disease. You've heard me talk about this many times. So the black lung disease uh, is a problem even with port injection. But when you don't have port injection, you have direct injection into the cylinder, it becomes even more severe. And as a result, we had a vehicle in our shop, a Traverse, this week, the whole week, there was a traveler from Louisiana. Uh, they were most upset that we had the car for the whole week. They really didn't believe that we worked on their car the whole week, and we did work on their car the whole week. Uh, our master ASC uh, lead technician and shop foreman, Johnny Bars, who does a fantastic job, did everything but pull his hair out, and I was there with him finally yesterday. Uh, Eric Reitman, who is our, uh, uh, who who we buy our chemicals from, came in and brought in some, uh, a, like a beta test, some very powerful commercial grade chemicals that his company is coming out with, but not is on the shelf, not on the shelf yet. We use that to clean the uh, intake ports and the back of the intake valves. Imagine if you took a, a mushroom. Just think of a mushroom and push it into mud, and it, it didn't tear up. It was a metal mushroom, and you push it down into mud, and you pulled it up, and imagine the caking of mud that it would pull up with it. That's as severe as this vehicle was. Now, it didn't fill the whole hole, so it didn't fill the whole mushroom, but it filled the stem, and, in, and, and the stem was the size of a pencil, but yet the club, the, 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 the dirt dauber style carbon was the size of your thumb covering the, the valve. It was so much so that the engine would not run correctly. And what we did was we, we used this very powerful chemical and we ran three doses through this engine. In doing so, that diluted the oil, so we had to change the oil. What we did, we actually put an additive in the oil. When we finished this vehicle that had a mind of its own that had been running so erratically, ran beautifully. Now granted, that engine is not fixed because we couldn't possibly eliminate the amount of carbon that build up with one treatment even though we use three times the, the, the treatment, that it, it needs more treatment. Now, what's the answer? If you have a GDI engine and you're past 30,000 miles, 30, miles, you're too late getting it cleaned from an induction system service. And I'm not here to sell you anything. I'm just telling you that's a challenge, and it concerns me because my Jag that I ordered after Tata bought Jaguar from Ford, otherwise I would never have bought a Jag, is a direct injection. So my next goal at 35,000 miles is to look at my own car, and I'll be doing that to give you an update and a report so that I can see when best to start the induction system service. Otherwise, if your car is direct injection. Now, how big of a problem is this? I will share this with you. The 2017 Ford EcoBoost engine no longer has gasoline direct injection engine only. It has GDI and port injection. Ford has added port injection back to its 2017 EcoBoost engine. Why? And I believe this in my heart of hearts and all the, and all the information that I've shared with you and, and the education and through my uh, years and years of thirst knowledge, knowledge for thirst, that it is absolutely because of the carbon buildup that's going to occur and is occurring in all the GDI engines. So there you have it. That's what happened to me just this week, and I'll give you a report as we go along. But folks, just know this. How are you going to feel when you go into a shop and they, with 30,000 miles, and they say, oh, you need to clean your valves. Well, what do you have to do? Well, you know, so it's forewarned, it's forearmed. That's all I can say. Larry, whew. now i got to slow down. In Missouri, we're going to take a call from Larry. Triple Eight Car Clinic is the number for you to call, and Jan will take your call. In the meantime, Larry, welcome to Bobby Likas Car Clinic. Thanks for holding. Oh, thank you, Bobby. Hey, I've got an old one GMC Jimmy that I use. Uh, I, I live in Missouri, and I go to Nebraska and South Dakota hunting in the fall. Yes, sir. 
And the cruise control, I had a transmission put in. I don't know if this has anything to do with it. But now the cruise control is, uh, I'll start up a grade and it'll downshift. And if the grade is steep enough, it downshifts again and my RPMs just yes. jump. Yes. And it scares the heck out of me. Yes, yes. Uh, the reason, of course, we know the reason that it downshifts uh, is because the engine is low on power. So your problem is not the cruise control. Your problem is that the engine is down on power. And when you, it's like riding a 10-speed bicycle, and you go first, second, third. But if you go to first gear and you and you take off and you're going two miles an hour, half mile an hour, then you go to third, then you go to tenth, your legs say, hey, wait a minute, I can't turn the pedals. You you, you know, that's too much problem. So it, you'd have to downshift. That's what's happening in your in your jimmy. I, I say, and it's a, it's, it's a drop in vacuum. So you could have anything from a worn timing chain that would retard the camshaft, that would reduce the compression, that would make the engine lazy, that would that would send a signal to the computer that oh, I'm, 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 I'm bogging down here, and the, and the computer would say, wait, I'll save you, I'll downshift for you. So what's happening is natural. However, if it's different from what it was before, it's, it, it's probably because the transmission is shifting up like it's supposed to, and when it does, it, the engine does not have the power, the lung power, the torque to sustain that speed up the hill. Some downshifting is normal, uh, but what you have may be abnormal, so I would have a, a shop test the vacuum of the vehicle and see what kind of vacuum it holds going up a hill because it sounds like it's dropping down below 10, 10 12 inches of vacuum and that's no no i mean it should run it should idle at about uh, 18 to 20 inches of vacuum and it should run down depending on the topo on the topography it should it should run uh, and the vacuum always changes in fact you'll see a lot of manufacturers that came out with drivers gas mileage gauges you know that would be green and red you know according to your throttle all it is is the vacuum glorified vacuum gauge and the more you step on the accelerator the more you lose the vacuum because you're in, you're inducing atmospheric pressure and and taking away the the diff pressure differential between the manifold and the and the and the uh, atmospheric pressure so the bottom line uh, i think you have a low power condition that's causing this how's the gas mileage on a vehicle uh it's run consistent about 18 miles a gallon. Well, I take that back. On trips, I get much better. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm speaking of trips. I, I'm, we're talking trips here uh, because you don't use a cruise in town. So uh, yeah. is your gas mileage comparable to what it's been in the history of the vehicle? Yeah, I haven't noticed uh, any yeah. drop in gas mileage. And power? How's the power seem to you? Well, I, it seems like it's awful sluggish lately. Yeah, see, you could have a you could have a restricted exhaust. You could have a converter. Any check engine lights on? Uh, occasionally, it does come on. Okay, okay. The fact that it occasionally comes on means that there's some threshold that is exceeded, and the light comes on. Then once you drive through a couple of drive cycles, it goes off. The good news is the code that made that light come on is still stored in the car. So take it to a certified shop, and you can go to asashop.org to find a certified shop and have them to read not only read the codes, but check the architecture. Now, here's the difference between reading a code. A parts company advertises a lot that they can read your code. Well, anybody can read a code. That doesn't mean anything except, yo, there's code. All right, there's a code stored in there. What you have to have with a professional, and what we do, is we get beyond the gatekeeper, which is an electronic gatekeeper that does that keeps everybody out of that system. We get beyond the gatekeeper because they recognize that we have the authority and the expertise to do so, and we get into the architecture of the software to to make things work. We can trigger electronics, and we can you know we can trigger suspensions, and we can trigger EGR valves and and emissions controls and what have you, all from a laptop, by by getting into the system without jailbreaking it. Uh, so, but in, in essence, uh, we're legally jailbreaking the system, and, and and because we have the professional tools to do it, so have a legal shop, which is an ASE certified technician, 
read the codes and check your car to see what codes are there and share with you what's in the code because there's a, there's a problem on low pressure and low power and low torque. I'm glad you called me. Let me know how it works out for you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. T uh, safe driving, Larry. And now Thank we're going to go to uh, Bill in South Carolina. Bill, welcome to Bobby Likas Car Connect. Thanks for holding. So what yes, kind sir. of mileage or what kind of miles can you expect out of a set of brakes on a car? Well, it depends on whether I'm driving or my wife. <laughs> I mean, I've got 44,000 miles on a car manufactured in 2004. Well, uh, 60,000 60, miles, uh, you know, some cars go 60, 70,000 miles. Uh, we, we have uh, uh, post uh, mail or mail route people that use hard pads and, and uh, every three, every two months they got to put pads on the car because they stop, go, stop, go. So it all depends on the driving, really. Uh, if, if you're, an, if you're a, a moderate driver and you don't run up to a stoplight and slam the brakes on, uh, you, you can expect I would think 55, 50, 55, 60,000 miles. Uh, I had a gentleman that uh, came through here from Louisiana, had 100 plus thousand miles on his Porsche and said he had the original brakes. And I said, yeah, right. And uh, so he called me on the radio. Then he then he came here and stopped in one day. He said, hey, remember me? I'm the guy that's got 140,000 miles and I brought the car to show you. I'm on the way to, to South Florida Disney and I want to stop by and see your studio and show you my brakes. And then I got to talking to him and he uses downshift. He uses the transmission and the paddle shifters to downshift. So, yeah, he it's the way he drives. But he, he truly does have 140,000 miles on the original brakes in that car. Uh, so my car has 36,000 miles, and the brakes are a third worn on my car. Yeah, this this thing's 12 years old, and the only thing I've done to it, the car is other than oil changes, a battery last year, battery original battery lasted 11 and a half years. Wow. And uh, original tires lasted 11 years, and I've just got about 45,000 Well, here's what I would recommend, Bill, for you. Number one, uh, the lifebloods of that vehicle need to be changed. Uh, the fluids, the coolant, that's for sure. The brake fluid needs to be changed. I would recommend you take it to a shop and have an annual inspection performed. And if a shop doesn't offer that service, ask them if they have a pre-purchase vehicle inspection. That and you know that's for like when you're looking to buy a car. Yeah, it and, goes to shop twice a year for okay. oil change. Well, you just continue doing what you're doing. You're all right. Thanks for calling. And they keep telling me, yep, brakes are fine. Everything else is fine. Well, you're a good no. owner. You're a good owner. You're a good driver. I mean, it's just like I've got a a uh, Ford Ranger, and I've only got 35,000 miles on it, and it's a 2006. Well, there you go. It just, it just proves, and, you know, it's like, folks, how long do brakes last? It depends. depends on the drive. If you're like Bill, and, and, and you're a, a, a good care provider, that, that works. Bill, thanks so much for your call. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Let's take a quick call from Steve in Texas. Steve, welcome to Bobby Likas Car Clinic. Hey, good morning, Bobby. Good morning, How are sir. You? I'm great, thanks. How about yourself? Hey, I'm doing good. Hey, I've got a 2006 Chevy pickup truck, right. uh, approximately 106,000 miles on it. Okay. A while back, my check engine light came on. Uh, or actually down there, the display said gas cap was loose. Right. Um, and the light was on. So right. I replaced the gas cap. Um, the light didn't go off. I had it tested new. I believe the code was 0441, and it was something about an emissions. If EVAC, EVAC, EVAC system? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Bill, I'm out of time. Uh, I, I don't want to rush you. Would you call back next week? Certainly. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Steve. Uh, hey, have a great day. You as well. I appreciate your consideration, folks. I wish I had more time. Two hours? Really? Really? Where did it, where did it go? Remember, next week, call earlier, and I want to tell you about the uh, really, really systems that I'm testing. Like us, you'll love us. This is Bobby Likas Car Clinic. Bobby Likas Car Clinic is a copyrighted presentation of Car Clinic Productions Incorporated and may not be reproduced or rebroadcast without the express written approval of Car Clinic Productions Incorporated.
It's time for another Berryman Hestimonial, where everyday drivers share their experiences with products featuring Hest, Berryman's exclusive high-energy solvent technology. The result is a more complete combination of available chemical technologies. Ronald writes in about his 2010 Chevy. Carbon deposits were causing problems with the NOx sensors, which resulted in lower MPG, 21 MPG. After using Berryman's B12 Chem Tool, MPG is now in the 29 to 30 range. Learn more about Berryman products and their Hest technology at BerrymanProducts.com. Driving has a rhythm all its own. Don't wreck it with a text. Before you get behind the wheel, silence your phone. Or better yet, designate a texter. For more text-free driving tips, visit StopTextStopRex.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. You're listening to Bobby Lyka's Car Clinic. If you raise the outfitters, I'm Tina. How can I help you? I'd like to place an order. Great. Which item? The cotton roll neck sweater, large. Okay. Periwinkle loaded or caramel? The caramel, please. The what? I'd like it in caramel. Oh, the caramel? Yeah, that's what I said, Tina. Actually, you said caramel when it's pronounced caramel. Can't we just call it yellow? No. Everyone knows the best part of a Milky Way. They just don't know how to say it. After all, it's our caramel. It's caramel. Ugh, that makes a Milky Way great. You start my morning. You stir in my soul. You warm my heart. Make me feel whole. Your aroma calls me. It starts my morning. Happy morning. Your name is 